Uh-huh, I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Here we go today. I, I, I think I have something for a lot of people today. At least I hope I do. And this is about uh, on your journey. And this is about something that happens to us all. I mean, what happens to all of us from time to time when we get discouraged? What happens to all of us when we feel like quitting? What happens to all of us when we have that turn back moment? What happens to all of us when it don't seem like it's going to pan out? Because I want you to understand something, that everyone, every single living soul has those thoughts about something at some point in their life. I mean, you know, look, I've oftentimes uh, been discouraged about things not happening as fast as I'd like them or things don't pan out the way I would like for them to have panned out. I mean, there's so many ways to get discouraged. But But what my encouragement to you is when discouragement comes is... Understand this, it is a part of the growth process. It is a test. It is a test of your faith. How bad you want it? Do you really believe? That's that's all faith is, is simply, and I've said this how many times, faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. So when discouragement comes, setbacks comes, it is a test of your faith. At least it's been that way for me. Now, other people can explain it another way. I'm not other people. I can only give it to you the way it's come to me and throughout my life. And man, oh man, oh man, discouragement sometimes is tough to deal with. Because it seems at times when you are discouraged that is so absolute that this means the end. And if you allow it to set in, it can be just that, the end of you. When merely, merely it was a test. That's all it is. But the majority of people that I know who are not successful or who have told me the story of how they gave up, it was, was because at a moment of discouragement, that they allowed it to set in and it became so engulfing that it became the reason why you shouldn't finish. And then they started justifying it with, here the one that I hate to hear. Well, if if it's God's will, excuse me? If it's God's will that you fail? If it's God's will that you're not successful? If it's God's will that you lay down and give up? It's God's will that you allow yourself to amount to not to not reach your uh, potential. That's God's will. That's not the God I know. That's not the God I serve. That's not the God I've read about. That's not the God I believe in. I'm sorry. I just, my mother always taught me something that he didn't bring me this far to leave me. I just don't believe that. Not for a second. Now, have I convinced myself of some things? Yep. Have I allowed the devil to come into the picture and paint a different one for me? Yep. Yep. I've done all of that. But you can't blame that on God now. Come on. So when when discouragement comes, try to look at it, if you can, as a test of your faith. And you merely have to pass the test. It could be for a day, a half a day, a few hours, a week, a few weeks. It don't matter. Don't nobody know how long the test period is. Your job is to keep the faith and keep moving. Keep the faith and keep moving. Keep working. Keep believing. Keep hope alive. That's your job. If you do that, that's how you pass the test. It could be over tomorrow. It could be over in two weeks. It could be over in a month. You don't know. But all you got to do is wake up and keep the faith 
and fight the discouraging feelings. And how do you do that, Steve? Now, here we go. This is the part I know about for sure. Because how many times I've had to fight off discouragement in order to get to where God wanted me to be. What do you do when you become discouraged? Well, I think of the outcome. When I get discouraged about a task, I think about the outcome. Man, what would it be like if I were to complete the task? What would it be like, man? What would the outcome be for me if I hung on in there, if I didn't give up? If I, if, if I, if I imagine, I imagine if I don't quit, I imagine if I don't give up, what would it be like? Man, suppose everything I'm hoping for comes true. But if I don't quit and give up, that might just be the case. I start talking to myself like that. I think of what the upside is. What's the upside to staying with it? You see, all this is the same thing. I'm just giving you different ways to look at it. I'm saying the exact same thing over and over, but I'm just trying to find a switch that connects in your mind where you can say, okay, man, I'm going to hang in there. Because if you think of the outcome and the outcome is appealing to you, if you imagine what it would be like if you don't give up or you don't quit, if you if if you think only of what the upside is to staying with it, and then I, 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 I go, where can this lead to? If I stay with it, man, and the outcome comes true, where else could that lead me to? Because, I mean, there's always more to it. So where, where else could this lead me to? What are the possibilities, man? What are the limitless possibilities? What could God possibly have in store for me if I just hang in there, if I pass this test of faith, if I just pass this test? Now, it ain't going to be the only one, but you got to get past this one, though. Then you're going to hit a smooth plane, then it's going to be another one. It's going to be another one. Life ain't nothing but a series of tests, man. Man, when you're thinking about giving up, when you're discouraged, think of the outcome. Imagine what it would be like if you don't quit, if you don't give up. What's the upside to staying with it? Where can this all lead to? What what can this get you to? If the, If you do this and you get to where you think you want to be, oh, my God, what's after that? What are the limitless and endless possibilities of holding on to your faith? What could really be out there for me, man, if I just passed this test? You got to talk yourself into hanging in there. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, let me clear my throat and let me clear my throat. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey. Oh, the way I had that hip hop ass moment from. I love that. <laughs> okay. That is my jam, okay. man. Yeah. So let me clear my throat. Hey, I cleared it. I'm here. Thank okay, God for DJ that. Thank God for the ability to clear my throat. Yeah. yeah. Ain't nobody here but me and Cheryl and Carla. That's it. The mouth of the South is here, but y'all don't have to hear how South the mouth really is. She country now. Lord, Lord have mercy. That's Name is Mississippi Monica. Lord have mercy. <laughs> she loves everything that is Mississippi. Everything. Yep. Catfish country. Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steve Harvey Morning Show starring Shirley Strawberry, Carla Terrell, Mississippi Monica, and myself. The Maybe one and only Steve Harvey. Day. Man, please understand. <laughs> <laughs> My wife Paige says she's married to the one and only. Yes, uh, she is, uh. Mrs. Harvey. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You know what she had the nerve to Did tell you... me the other day? What? 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 Steve, somebody like me had to marry you because you a lie. <laughs> well, oh, did she lie? Was any of that a lie? Just no I lies. I wanted to no. know. No lies. Wait a minute. No. I'm a lie. <laughs> That's what you Ooh! said. Yeah. Is that what that's I looked at that. Yeah, we had this real conversation. I went, I'm a lot. <laughs> she said, then she said, but Steve, but you a lot too, though. No, not near as much as you. <laughs> then well, women happened? are a lot anyway. I mean, we're a lot. Yeah. 
We're alive. Then I, well, then I end up agreeing with her. What, what the mm-hmm. hell you talking about? What you think, I'm going to keep arguing? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't going to work out. No, uh, not in your favor. Uh, uh, no, uh. no, it's not. No, it's not. Hey, Steve, what's, what do you think today in 22, what's the best way to break up with someone? The best way. Not And, and leave texting out of it, please. Oh, yeah. Social no, no, no that's not the best way to do it. It's the best way to break up with somebody that has been the best way to always break up with somebody. Mm-hmm. And what is that? Yeah, just drive off. Oh. <laughs> Get in <Yeah>. your car. <laughs> man. Drive off, dog. Hey, man, my strong to drive off and relocate. Mm. Gotta Get move out too. of state and disappear from social media and go on, man, and start over, dog. Because you know, you, you know, not just let it go with the woman because they want closure. Closure, right? They, yeah. we still want closure, yeah. And that's so gonna produce drunk. another argument that you're not uh-huh. capable of. Uh-huh. And another discussion that you're not capable of because you, you ain't in touch with your emotions the way they want uh-huh. you to be. And mm-hmm. so right. now, mm-hmm. now not only are you senseless mm-hmm. and, and heartless and mm-hmm. non-thoughtful, now mm-hmm. you're stupid. Right. And you're still, with all that, you're still just driving off. Drive off, dog. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, you heard it right here on the one and only Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, thank you, Steve. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we'll run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on. It is time to run that prank back. You're in for the nephew today. Yeah, it's about truck driving. Break a break one night, the truck driving. This, truck driving. <laughs> this Johnny Joe. Oh, 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 oh. On the steels and wheels of ones and twos on the CB radio. This truck driver, y'all going, come on, uh, run it, Cat. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Franklin. Yeah, this is Franklin. Hey, Franklin, how you doing? This is Roosevelt, giving you a call from Human Resources. Human Resources? Hey, hey what's up, Roosevelt? What can I do for you? I, I, all right, man, I'm calling you from Human Resources, with Transit Partners, where you, uh, been, you've been driving trucks for us for... Uh, Quite some time now. What are you, you six and a half years right now? Man, I'm eight and a half years. He's two years short, baby. <laughs> okay, eight and a half years. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. Enjoying this road life, man. I love working with you guys, man. The benefits is there. I mean, um, I'm surprised to get a call from you. I mean, I mean, hope everything Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're on the road right now. You're probably driving. I wanted to give you a call. And uh, is this a bad time? Or can you talk right now? Yeah, I actually pulled over, man. I had to get something to eat, man. Okay, okay. So listen, let me tell you what's going on here with uh, with GTP. What we're doing is we are doing uh, some job exchange, and uh, some of the uh, drivers that we have uh, have been pulled out of a pool, and uh, some of you guys are going to be actually driving in different places now. So for the next six months, uh, within the next thirty days here, Franklin, you're going to be um, you're uh, you're going to be driving trucks in South Africa. You're going to be Whoa, uh, for for about six uh, for about six about six months. You're going to drive in oh, South Africa. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, listen, I ain't got no problem with South Africa, but y'all, y'all, y'all rather smart. I'm not going to no South Africa. I don't okay. know how to drive on the right hand side of the. Bro, man, I love Africans. I love everything about Africa, but I'm not going. I got a family out here in the United States of America, and you're trying to tell me I got to go to South Africa. Come on, man, what type of are you on, man? It, it, it's, it's, frankly, it's part of the job exchange is what it is, man. I okay. don't know what type you of only, job exchange I got going on, man. I don't want to be part of that job exchange. No, no, I'm not going to no damn South Africa. This is okay, not but, happening, but, but, man. This is this, listen to me, Franklin. Six months and you'll be back in the states, okay? Let me let me say what this. What type to you, of National Frank? Geographic program y'all got going on, man? I don't know this, what this, y'all got going on that y'all calling me. I'm in the middle of the <laughs> parking lot trying to eat me a <laughs> cheeseburger from being on the road all night, and you talking about sending me to <laughs> South Africa? What type of <laughs> are you on, man? This some foreign exchange program y'all got going on? I'm not this, being this, part of this. <laughs> you pulled my name out of pool like it was a. Susu to come tell me that I'm up to be driving in South Africa. This must be a joke. No, 
No, no, I'm, no, no, I'm no. Not. So you, no, but this no, is a good, this is a good, this is a good thing though, Franklin. I think you're gonna like it. And no, um, no, it's not a know, good you, thing. What are you telling me? It's a good thing. I got wife and kids. What am I? What, am, what the f- are you talking about, South Africa? Do they even have f- roadways out there? I'm not going to f- South Africa. Are you serious? They, 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 I, I'm, they, not, they, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hearing this correct, brother. I'm not hearing this correct, Mr. Roosevelt. I don't. South what? Okay, my okay, kid plays just, baseball. Just, 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 are you telling me to go? Just, to f- South Africa? Are you serious? Okay, this Franklin, hear me out here, man. Let me, uh, like, like I said, they 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 pull names out of a pool, and uh, you and about fifteen other guys are going to be going to different parts I don't of the a world. F- what type of pool you pulled it in? You better put me back in the shallow part. You going to the deep end pool? Of, man, get the. F- I'm not going to f- South Africa. I am not going to no. f- South okay, Africa. Okay, I don't, okay, I'm not okay. taking no malaria shots. I don't even got a passport. You want me to go to? Well, listen to me, Franklin. We're going to get you all the shots you need within the next 30 days, so you'll be set to go. You know, I'm not we, going to. I I f- around go to South Africa and Trump won't let me back in the country because y'all. F- my, I'll, I'll f- quit right now. I'm not going to South Africa. It's a job exchange, Franklin. Okay, I let me say this. But let, what let, type let me, of job but, exchange? So, what, so but, what, what are we exchanging? You bringing South Africans over here, and then you bringing me over there? Y'all, my wife is not. Going to be happy about this. I'm not going. My my son plays okay, baseball. But, but can I, can I gonna... tell you this? That your your salary actually doubles the six months while you're over there. Don't try to don't try to tell me about that. What in South African dollars or American dollars? What is it? What is it? It's Amer- you, it, it, it you, will you be guys, American you, I, I, don't, don't try to. It will be American me, dollars, man. Franklin. Fra- Franklin, it will be American dollars. I'm not going to no South Africa. I am not going. Matter of fact, this is my last day in the. Y'all can come pick up this rig in the in parking lot because I'm not going to South Africa. I don't care how you spell it or you say it. I ain't going. Listen, it's, uh, you've been with the company eight, eight plus years, and I just got to tell you, you are obligated. You've been chosen out of a pool. All you have to do is six months. You're going to get paid double. Your family's going to be fine. You'll be back. And I ain't obligated months. to do shit, but drive a truck like I do every day. I'm not going. You can't tell okay. me about being obligated. Let me tell you what I'm obligated to do. I'm obligated to throw this truck in fourth gear and drive right through your human resources window because I ain't going to South Africa. And I keep telling you that. I told you that since you got on the damn phone. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, 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 but let me ask you something, Franklin. You, you've been here for, with us for eight some years, man. You don't, you don't want to continue your job here with the company? I don't give a about this job right now trying to send me overseas like you're setting me up for something. I ain't going. Matter of fact, let me turn this truck on right now. I'm coming down to see you, Mr. Roosevelt. Okay, wait, 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 hold on now. Do you know um, Jermaine Yeah, I know Rivers. But what do you got to do with it? Okay, let me go on and say this, Franklin. This right here that you're talking to is nephew Tommy, and your boy Rivers got me to prank phone call you. You just got pranked by your boy Jermaine Rivers. Oh, that <laughs> mother! <laughs> Wait till I see <laughs> Rivers. So you ain't no Roosevelt, and I ain't gotta go to South Africa. No, oh, my God. <laughs> this is nephew Tommy, man, I be listening to y'all. Mother on the road. Oh, Rivers, you want to play around? I f- when I put some sugar in your m- All right, Franklin, before we leave, man, tell me this. What is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Uh, we're, you see how we're starting off ignorance. All right. Uh, thank you, Steve. Coming up next, ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, a juror in the R. Kelly case had a panic attack. In sports entertainment news, yeah, Phoenix Suns owner Robert Sarver has been suspended for one year and fined $10 million by the NBA. And in music news, we lost a Chicago native and world-renowned jazz music legend. Uh, We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. 
This one's from Raquel in Newark. Raquel writes, I just got married and my husband and I have a new home. We picked out all of the finishes for the house, but then he surprised me with all new furniture. The living room and the primary bedroom are completely furnished and I hate it all. I hate it. I hate it. He thinks... He's th- he thinks he's got style, but it is awful. How do I get him to return it? Well, you're just going to have to say, sweetie, look, I love you. I appreciate the gesture. Mm-hmm. I, it was so thoughtful of you. Man, what a nice thing to do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as we picked out this house together, we started this process. I wanted you to allow me to have more of a say-so. Yeah. And the furniture you picked out, I, I just, I can't live with it. I'm not going to be happy with it. It's going to affect my mood in the bedroom. It's going uh-huh. to affect my mood in the living room. I just do not like it. And I try, but I'm so appreciative of the yes. fact that you did it. Keep the appreciation high, but you oh, have to okay. express your lie. disdain for that damn furniture. What is it looking like in there? Well, like, here's what you could do. Like, here's what you could do. Like, Uh, y'all be kissing and stuff going up the steps, and he think it's going to be good. And then Uh when you walk in the bathroom, when walk in the bedroom, stop kissing him and throw up. (laughs) Seriously? Yeah. Because she hates the first. Yeah. Stop kissing him. Turn around. Hair up. Put your finger in your throat. Don't let him see that. And hurl. Vomit in the throat. And then just say, it's the bedroom, baby. It's the bedroom. (laughs) It's going to happen. And every time you go in there, same damn thing. (laughs) And he'll get the message, just don't throw up on the furniture so you can take it back. Take it it back and we'll be (laughs) stuck with it. (laughs) Right. That's good advice, Steve. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Anna in Dover says, I am dating a man that has two dogs, and he has no problem with the dog sleeping with us. But I do. He lets them lick his face and all around his mouth and everything. And then he wants me to kiss him afterwards. He wants to kiss me afterwards. It's foul and unsanitary. Is this a red flag? Is it a red flag? Yeah. yeah I don't know if it's a red flag or not, but the uh-huh. whole whole room on fire. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? We passed the red flag. Uh-huh. <laughs> you licking dogs in the mouth, letting them lay in the bed with you, then he want to uh-huh. lick you in the mouth. No, nah, we ain't doing this here, partner. I'm going to tell you what. You what? love them dogs way too much, and that's fine. But I ain't uh-huh. finna stop dating him. I'm not coming over there sleeping with no dog. I'm not mm-hmm. kissing you after a dog has kissed you in your mouth. Dog licks themselves and other dogs, and we not doing it. Period. But you know, nice you to know, meet you, but not you don't know what, Shirley. Well, why are you so mad at me? I'm just I'm not mad at you. I'm just waiting on this next statement. Watch. Go ahead and say it. Because you try know to fix they it. say dogs' mouths are cleaner than humans. Who told you know y'all that? that? That's what it's, they say. Yeah. Who is they? Stop talking to white people. Y'all believe but... everything white people tell y'all. And the black person <laughs> no. told you that. Has your grandma ever said that to you? No. No. Has your mother ever said that you? No. No. Stop but, listening to these white people tell y'all stuff. They're not Nasty ass dogs sitting up in here eating, <laughs> licking boo-boo and eating stuff off the ground. Uh, and licking they sure. and sniffing each other's booty and then putting their mouth on your mouth. How the hell that's clean? Okay. But what if you I'm did half the stuff a dog that. did with his mouth, would you consider your mouth clean? But we're different. We're, we're humans. They're animals. Okay, Mary. I'll tell you what, sure. Then that's what the chief love officer's answer was. I'm not Here's okay. What huh? You need to calm it down. Y'all. I'm talking very calm. Here's what people could do. Y'all could do what the CLO said, or uh-huh. you could take Shirley's advice and know that dogs' mouths are cleaner than ours. I am yes, not a Carla, veterinarian. What do you I'm want saying say? Shirley's just repeating. I've heard that yes. too from different veterinarians. Yes. And there are that black from, veterinarian doctors. There are black veterinarians. What black veterinarian you heard say that? <laughs> Why do I have to have a specific Why name? Is he, well, I'm adamant like... and passionate about what I'm saying. Is Eric Thomas mad when he talks? No, he's <laughs> adamant and passionate. And people are always talking about Eric Thomas, he's so mad. No, the brother's passionate. Okay. Next. Okay, listen to this. 
Uh-huh. But you have a dog. Listening to white folk. <laughs> you made a song out of yeah. that. Yeah, how about oh, that? God. You want a Disney record? <laughs> <laughs> you. Sir. All right, Gail in Valdosta, we're moving on, uh, says, my husband and I were at a charity fashion show, and the final scene was swimwear. All of the models were really beautiful and had banging bodies, banging bodies. He was smiling from ear to ear, and I noticed uh, he had an erection. He's 38. Is this normal or is this weird? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> And now I can't hear you. Before you were really loud, I could hear you. What did you just say? I just said, hell yeah, it's normal. What you mean it's normal? When you were riding, he thought it, yeah. What? He's sitting next to his wife. What? They, wasn't they walking past him? <laughs> <laughs> but what, what does that mean? Every beautiful woman that walks past him? This is gonna happen. He'll get an erection. <laughs> what? What? All the me, about? what? Let me try to find the nicest way to say. I need this. the same passion that you talked about. They were about at a charity mm-hmm. fashion, fashion show. Fashion show, yes, yes. This was not the one in Paris or New uh-uh. York where they fashion hire week. professional models. Mm-hmm. These were. Grown ass women uh-huh. coming down there with swimsuits on, uh-huh. with banging, <laughs> breasts out, stuff that giggling, means. little stretch marks, you Big know, real stuff, you. thickness, uh-huh. you know, little bit of cellulite, you know, uh-huh. little crinkle, you know, uh-huh. uh, that real stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Body. yeah. <laughs> They came by my boy, my boy. God, dog. Look at that. Yeah. He was doing all that. That boy on the Next inside. Next to his wife. On the inside. Boy, uh-huh. I wish you'd have been in there. <laughs> you'd have thought, right, HB- you thought it was halftime at HBCU. What? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The judge dismissed one of the jurors in the R. Kelly trial. The woman complained of a panic attack. She told the judge how she could not, quote, go on one minute more. The trial started four weeks ago. One of the alternate jurors replaced the panic attack uh, juror. He is a man in his 60s. The 12-person jury panel now has seven women and five men. Yeah, yeah, he he ain't gonna do this no more. Yeah. No, the woman uh-huh. had the panic attack, yeah. and then they replaced uh-huh. him. No. Replaced her. She ain't gonna do it no more. No more. Uh huh. She was done. Said. Yeah, I think she was done as well. Yeah. Y'all know he get mad. <laughs> uh, I can't do this no more. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. And in sports entertainment news, Phoenix Suns owner Robert Sarver has been suspended for one year and fined $10 million by the NBA as the league investigates uh, allegations that Sarver has a history of racist, misogynistic, and hostile incidents over his nearly two decade tenure overseeing the franchise. The investigation revealed that Sarver repeated or, re- or purported to repeat the N word on at least least five occasions spanning his tenure with the Suns. Uh, the investigation also concluded that Sarver used demeaning language toward female employees um, and cursed at employees in ways that would be considered bullying under present um, workplace standards. Under the NBA's one-year suspension, Sarver cannot be present at any Phoenix Suns, NBA, or Phoenix Mercury WNBA games, practices, or team business functions he's out of everything the nba said it would donate that 10 million dollars donate to, to to organizations that are committed to addressing race and gender-based issues in and outside of the workplace so there you go wow he's just in there cussing them out calling them the n-word right okay well they- you know I don't, I don't know how effective he could be after the one year suspension uh the 10 mm-hmm. million dollars gonna put a crimp in his game Ten million dollars is, is a fine for real. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. How does it? How does it make ten million dollars? Yeah. Really is. 
And I was reading that was the the league's maximum fine, so they gave him the max. Mm -hmm. You know, it's people out there, man. Um, it's so much out there. You you can't can't police it all. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we that's got true. That's... we we got body cams on police officers, and they so prevalent with it that some of them commit the crime right there on the body cam. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's they, true. they forget mm -hmm. they have it on and they just mm -hmm. go about their business and they yeah. So like it's hard to nature. police it all, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for, for people who don't think the Herschel Walker commercial where he talks about Warnock thinks that uh, America is a racist country. America does <laughs> suffer from racism. Yeah, and, and they got yeah, all these absolutely. Democrats on their shit. And <laughs> Who then, said they and didn't? Then, and then, well, Herschel Walker, his claim is he thinks that America is suffering racism. Yeah. I happen to think that America is full of good people. And, well, Herschel, <laughs> we think you full of sugar, honey, iced tea. Okay. Because, all see, right. there is racism does exist in this country. And just absolutely because your, your Negro behind wants to be a senator and do their beckoning wheel and call, you standing up there saying whatever they want you to say, don't make it not so. Mm -hmm. And that I'm, mm -hmm. probably has nothing to do with today, but I'm telling y'all, we have got to get ready for these November elections. And yes, you sir, have got man. to whenweallvote.org. Whenweallvote.org. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. got to get there now because these people are doing all forms of voter suppression this time. That's and right. They're That's trying right. to make it legal. They to move mailboxes. They mm -hmm. change zoning laws. They mm -hmm. stripped down the polling locations. Mm -hmm. They made more ID uh, requirements to get, and they've shortened the time limit that you can register to vote in order to vote. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, these All Republicans facts. have gotten sick to their stomach because they bought into the big Trump lie that the last election was stolen. And so now what they're doing is, listen to me carefully, y'all. They are setting it up so they can cheat and say, this is what y'all did. That's why they holding on to the lie. So when mm -hmm. they get busted for all the stuff they are doing in this new election, mm -hmm. it'll all be okay. Now, ain't no politicians able to say that. But I'm not a politician. And if you don't think you that they are it. preparing to turn Georgia back red and hmm. Wisconsin and Michigan and Philly and every other place that mm -hmm. flipped and, and Arizona and oh, yeah. Pennsylvania and all oh, this. Yeah. If you don't think that mm -hmm. they are red hot and determined, y'all, they are trying to prove to people of color again that voting doesn't matter. So now, when we you know. proved to them in the last election that it did matter. Yes, yes. That we can change the face of an election. They are now back to the business of, oh, no, you can't. And mm -hmm. so voter suppression is real. They are doing stuff, man, this election that is so cunning, so mm -hmm. slick, and setting them up to start taking back some position. We cannot allow this to happen. We are voting in November. All of these Republican tactics. I'm telling you, man, nothing has made me sicker than this Herschel Walker mess. Because I know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. They, against yeah. Warnock, who is African American, mm -hmm. they said, let's get us an African American. Because mm -hmm. you know they just blow, vote for people because they black. And mm -hmm. let's confuse them at the polls. He right. played football. And we'll split the black vote. And our candidate will get in. No, it's not, because all the white people going to vote for Hershey. That's right. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Steve. All the Coming Republican up... whites and Republican <clears throat> blacks, too. Them, too. Mm. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, we'll talk about LeBron James and his family on the cover of Vanity Fair right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, NBA star King LeBron James and his beautiful wife, Savannah James, are uh, killing it on the cover of Vanity Fair. Savannah is simply stunning in all of her looks. Uh, the article features the James, LeBron, Savannah, and their children, Bronny, Bryce, and Zuri. Uh, LeBron is entering his 20th year, 20th year in the NBA, and he is more than just an athlete. We all know LeBron will not just shut up and dribble. 
Uh, in the Vanity Fair article, LeBron and Savannah talk about their family dynamic and supporting their children's dreams. So, Steve, you know, we, we have to say, of course, that we love LeBron James, Russell Wilson, Jay-Z, uh, you, Steve Harvey, of course, uh, former President Barack Obama, and all the brothers out there who love, love, love their beautiful wives. You know, uh, President Barack Obama just said Michelle Obama was fine just last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> love mm-hmm. that. So here's the question, Steve. Why is it so important to teach young men that Black women are to be protected, loved, and respected? You can speak on this for sure. Well, I mean, you know, look, as much credit as we as men get for what we do and what we provide, we get a lot of credit for being great entertainers, great performers, great business people, great athletes. We get a lot of credit for that. I don't think enough credit is given to the role that men play as husbands and as fathers. And that's important because Mm -hmm. the family dynamic has always been a target for the system. Mm -hmm. Even as far as welfare goes, you know, they won't give a mother a check. I won't give you financial aid if there's a man present in the home. So that Mm -hmm. doesn't promote Mm -hmm. male-female relationships. Uh, The prison system is so misaligned with the incarceration of people of color. And all the time when this is going on, who is left holding the bag Mm -hmm. but the woman? Hmm. The woman is having to hold it down and together on so many levels for so many things. And when you see the structure in place and it's working, like I think of LeBron James and all he's accomplished, but not enough focus is on the great father and husband he is. But he's that way because of Savannah. You can be a successful person brother without a woman but you will never be a great man without a woman there are no great men in history without women and because women are the missing link in the ingredient and to promote that is evident because we need more of that in our society in our culture promoting family like real swiss and all of these other people out here that's doing it the right way Right. Yes, so all many right. more. So many more. I don't have time to mention. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. true. All right. Thank you, Steve. Coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we'll check your voicemail, 877-29-STEVE, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, it's time to check your voicemail. If you want to leave Steve a voicemail, you can do it by calling him at 877-29-STEVE. Operators are standing by. Uh, This caller, Steve's name is Anthony. He had a question about uh, dressing to impress. Hey, Steve, this is Anthony. I'm just calling to get some advice. You know, you're the best guy around that uh, dresses, I think. And I have an opportunity finally coming up for one of my dream jobs and you know, you kind of dress to impress. You kind of got to, you know, sell yourself. Uh, I was just trying to look for a little bit of advice. Black okay. suit, white shirt, black tie. Black suit, white mm-hmm. shirt, black tie. Very classy, very understated, but very stateful. It makes a statement, a black suit, a white shirt, a black tie. It's Mm non-offensive. It don't give a person on the other side of the desk to talk about, "Mm, I don't like red, why you wear red tie? I don't like green tie. Uh No, 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 no. See, when you go in there simple, that's why you notice, Anthony, at all black tie events, all men look damn near the same, which I Mm -hmm. hate. But they all look the same. They got on that black tuxedo, that white mm-hmm. shirt, and that little ass black bow tie. And they all sit up there. You won't see two women in that whole event with the same gown on. Oh, if you do, it's a problem for because sure. Because women know how to do it. Uh-huh. Men oftentimes have to play it safe. If you go on a mm-hmm. golf course in the summertime, every last one of them dudes got on shorts. Ooh. All of them wear them khaki shorts, gray shorts, uh-huh. blue shorts, cargo shorts. Uh, it, they just don't. It's, you got to play it safe, play it classy, play it dignified, Anthony. 
You cannot lose or blow the job in a black suit, a white shirt, and a black tie. You can get opinions in any other colors, but no one is upset with classic black. Mm. Nobody. Okay. Going to get your classic. job, dog. Yeah. All right. Uh, this caller left a message about your shirt. More more uh, wardrobe questions on the Publishers Clearinghouse commercial, Steve. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. In the morning, crew. I just want to say that suit that you had on, the shirt that goes with that suit, I don't know if it was orange or peach, but anyway, it really, really brings you out. You look so handsome. And that peach are either orange, because my TV, it shows two different colors when the sun hit it. But anyway, you was you was very handsome in that. I love you in that color. No disrespect to Miss Margie. You all have a wonderful day. Bye. Yeah, it ain't disrespectful, uh-huh. baby, thinking I'm fine. Just go ahead with that. <laughs> yeah. Go on, go on, run with that thought. Say what now, mother. Steve? It ain't disrespectful to think I'm fine. Just go on and do that right there. I sure wish Tommy was here to hear this. Thank you, baby. And I just wanted to further blow my own self up. I don't really think it was a shirt you was feeling. But we just tried not to be so damn disrespectful. So let's just go and leave it at the shirt. Thank you, baby. But those colors were beautiful, though, Steve. You had on, you have on. They really are. They do pop off the screen. They really are nice. And uh, people are noticing. All right, this caller, Michael. Uh, Publishers clear it out, baby. Back in the business, yeah. I know. <laughs> Uh, Michael, this is this is a caller, Michael. He was a guest on your TV show a few years ago. He wanted to update you on what's been hey, going Steve, on. Hey, Steve, this is Michael. I was on your show about five years ago and won a date with the beautiful Carmelita Jeter. And uh, just an update on myself. We um, did not work out. We went on one date. Unfortunately, it did not work out. Um, but recently, I was laid off from my job and mortgage. I've been working in 10 years. and Interest rates went up. And now I am a stripper, um, exotic dancer. Just had my first show last night at a bachelorette party. Pretty crazy update. Just wanted to give you. Anyways, hope all is well. It was great meeting you. And we'd love to catch up sometime. Take care. You know what's ironic? I, I remember what? him. <laughs> you remember Michael? <laughs> I remember the date set up. Uh-huh. I told her not to pick his ass. Uh-huh. She didn't listen to me. <laughs> she picked him, went on one date at work now. Now he a stripper. What I, mean, I saw it coming because he thought he was fine then. I don't know, five years later, he'd have found, he'd have found a way to get everybody think you fine. Stripping at the club, get your clothes off, get naked, get your bands on your booty, right. let's take it. Come on, let's take Coming it. up next, prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Get this title. My own daughter put me on blast. All right. We'll find out what that's all about. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We'll find out what it's all about in just a few. But right now it is time for today's prank phone call with none other than Steve Harvey. What you got, Steve? Oh, okay. Run it, cat. The rain. (laughs) The what? (laughs) That's it. The rain. I mean, excuse me. The ring. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) I love when you say run it, cat, because that's your favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> run it, cat. <laughs> Please proceed, cat. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, Denise. Please? Uh, yes, this is she. Hi, Denise. My name is Gavin. I'm, a, I'm actually the head jeweler here at Diamond. No, how you doing? I'm good. You brought your ring in, what was it, last week? I, I, I actually wasn't here, but you gave it to one of my salespersons. Yes. And, um, yes. You, you wanted to get it resized as well as, as, as get it appraised, correct? Yes, yes, yes. And you don't have to tell him I did that. I have to do the appraisal <laughs> on my own. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, listen. I actually did resize the ring. And, okay. and first of all, let me be the first to say um, uh, congratulations. When When is your wedding? Thank you. I'm getting married in September. Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank listen. You. I don't know how to tell you this. Now, as far as the appraisal is concerned, I've looked at your ring over and over, and this this ring is probably worth maybe fifty dollars. Excuse me. I've 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 been I've been in this business for over twenty years. But you know what? I'm confused on what you just said. And I understand that. What I'm trying to explain to you is that I've been in this business for over twenty years. I've seen so many different pieces of jewelry, mm-hmm. and this is something that you that. You buy late night on an infomercial mm-hmm. for nineteen ninety nine. This this is a cubic zirconian stone, and the the gold 
is not real at all. It's well, like gold wait, 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 wait. You, wait, you lost me. You lost me as much money as my man make and as much money as my father is putting down on his wedding or has put down. And you're gonna Ma'am, I here understand and... everything you're saying, but Denise, honestly, no, 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 no. I, no. What I, I need you, you want... to do is hold on. Wait, wait, I, wait, no, 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 wait. No, no, I need you to hold on because we need to call Victor. Wait, wait, man. Hold no, on. No, no. First of all, I can't. Wait. No, sir. Wait, wait, wait. Slow, no, sir, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Can you slow down for a second? Because I need you to hold on because we're going to get you to hold on, okay? Wait, wait, wait. What are you trying to What are you trying to do? Sir, I I need I need you to repeat to what you just said to me. Okay? Man, That's all I need you to do. I in the middle of personal stuff, man. You, oh, you in it. It's personal now. So I need you to hold on, okay? Oh, She calling her Man, okay, thank, thank, thank. Hello? Victor, hey, I need up, you to man? listen to this dealer that's on the phone. I'm, I want you to hear this that he just told me. Wait, wait, hold on. What's the, what's the problem? What you mean, what's the problem? He's going to tell you what the problem is. Go on, head on, sir. Go on, head on. Who's uh, this? Uh, hello? Yeah, who's this? All right, my name is Gavin. I'm from uh, Diamonds, mm-hmm. and actually your wife, I mean, well, your fiance rather, she, she brought her ring in to actually be resized. Yeah. And we, uh, we also did an appraisal on the ring for her, and... Actually, the ring is estimated to be only in the worth of around $50. Mm-hmm. $50. $50? 50 dollars 50 That's what the man said. Hold on, wait, 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 hold, 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 hold on Denise. Hold on, Denise. Well, sir, uh, obviously there's some sort of mistake, sir. Now, what you got to say uh, about that, Victor? Hold on. Wait, hold $50. On, uh, that's that's got to be some kind of mistake. So what did you say your name was, sir? My name is Gavin. I work here at Diamonds. I'm the head jeweler here. I've been here for 20 years. Yeah, and, uh, well, there, there's there's no way that that mm-hmm. ring is worth fifty dollars. I know what I paid for it, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. obviously there's some sort of mistake. Mm-hmm. Sir, it, it, there's it, not it, a mistake. It, it, right. I've been dealing with jewelry. I've seen it. I I can pretty much look at a ring, but I actually went into detail on this one, as I do all of them. And sir, I promise you, this is probably maybe between forty and fifty dollars before it's worth it. No, concern. no, mm-hmm. a- absolutely mm-hmm. not. That's mm-hmm. that's impossible. Yeah. I mean, now, how I, is that I impossible? Have... He's the jeweler. You heard him say he's been doing it for twenty. Yes, but how is that impossible? Does, I don't understand that. Like, All the money that my dad is putting down on this wedding, and you're going to pay $50 sir, sir, for sir, a you ring? Bought a, you bought a cheap ring, sir. No, 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 I did not buy a cheap Victor. ring. Victor! This is, this, is, this is obviously some kind of mistake. You didn't got you Oh, didn't you got sure got that right. <laughs> you sure got that right. So what you got to say for yourself? Fifty. Dollars? You can't, Dennis, you cannot believe that that's right. That's, this is obviously some kind of mistake, mm. sir. Uh, oh, it is a mistake. A mistake in me thinking I'm going to get married to the man of my dream. I do have the engagement ring that was purchased and bought for your wife. Mm. And no, you I, don't think you, I don't think you do. Be... I don't think you have my ring mm. because if you mm. have my ring, mm. you wouldn't be telling me that it's worth $50. Mm. Sir, I, mm. I have the ring that, that your wife, uh, that your fiancé brought in. Fiancé. Well, ain't his wife yet. Hold on, hold on. The man is trying to explain. I'm trying to get to the bottom. <laughs> okay, excuse you... me. Excuse thank me. You, thank you. So you have, I don't think you have the right ring. Uh, sir, Mr. I have the right ring, and what I'm letting you know, sir, is that this is something you buy on an infomercial in, the, in 2 yeah, o'clock in the morning. Hold on, on man, hold on. Dude, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> infomercial. You like that? I ain't buying no damn ring on infomercial. I bought the ring from a reputable establishment. I have the receipt. Hmm. I have the certificate. So... Obviously, the mistake is on your end. Where are sir, you the mistake is not here. Sir, you bought a piece of junk. Come, a piece Mr. Of he's been doing it all these years. How the hell he going to make a mistake? Where the f*** you come off telling me I bought a piece of junk? I know what I bought. If there's any mistake that's been made, it's on your end. Where, sir, where? it's not on my end. Here yeah, man, hold on. Don't, we don't, don't raise your Don't raise your This f*** can fix you one thing, Victor. My dad is paying too much money for this wedding. So your dog going to pay 50 dog on dollars for a dog on wedding. You wait till I tell him this Chill, hold on. First of all, I don't appreciate Sir, you. Sir, I want to tell you this. This is a typical case of you trying to pawn it off on oh, us because you, you bought a there piece of junk for 50 bucks. Oh, Victor, all the money that you dogs on make, and I get $50 worth of a ring? Denise, hold on. Let me talk to you. Mm. Uh, where are you calling yeah, Get the talking. Get the talking. Diamonds. Mm-hmm. Diamonds. I ain't never heard of that. Where is it? Mm-hmm. So your wife knows exactly where it is. She's the one that brought the ring in. I tell you what, I'm going to come down there to see the ring that you're talking about. If it's not the ring that I gave my girl, I'm going to take $7,600 out of your because that's what wait, I wait, paid wait, for wait, this wait, So wait. now you want to jump on me because you bought your wife a piece of Come on and now. And you want to put it on me. You, you don't tell me what the I know what the I spent on a ring. And you, I don't know what kind of you're trying to pull. First of all, I don't appreciate you coming to my household trying to mess my you want to come at me with this? I know the ring better be real. <laughs> I know that. If I were you, Miss Denise, I would not marry somebody hey, that's going to be. I, what a I'm coming, I'm looking for your punk. And you know what? This you don't get the ring, it ain't right. Me and you going to go at it. Can I say one more thing to both of you all? Better, I tell you what, if it ain't some 
that I want to hear, me and you going to have some more problems. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Y'all just got pranked by Denise's sister. That. <laughs> That's why she ain't got no man today. <laughs> wow. That's uncool, man. <laughs> wow. That's uncool, Tommy. You about to start some <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> Nick, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I will make man. it up you know, to you, baby. You don't I play am with sorry. a black woman's ring? <gasps> I got to ask y'all something. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Wow. <laughs> The, the Steve, Steve Harvey, Harvey morning, morning show. show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she was so upset. I would have been too, though. Yeah, girl. $50 cubic. Uh huh. Sometimes these pranks, you know, I, I don't like commenting on Tommy pranks sometimes. As a matter of fact, can I be honest with you? I'm tired of talking about these pranks when Tommy ain't here. Tommy, okay. you need to get your ass to work. <laughs> Oh, you sound like Junior. Now, I don't yeah. know if you on vacation. <laughs> you you and like Junior you. out. The hell y'all decide to do this at the same damn time. You the boss. You signed yeah. off. Yeah. I ain't signed <laughs> off on nothing. So they Ooh. just not here. They just not coming to work. Y'all told me what uh-huh. they wanted to do. I ain't signed off. What was I going to tell you? But guess who is y'all? here, though? Guess who is here? The very fine. Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> Mr. Steve Harvey, okay? Talk talk about me some more. (laughs) And the ladies of the Steve Harvey Morning Show, okay? Yes. Always. Always. Y'all find married (laughs) self. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. All right, coming up next, Strawberry Letters. Subject, my own daughter put me on blast. We'll get back into it. I mean, we'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. If you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) Strawberry Letter. (laughs) Thank you, Steve. Subject, my own daughter put me on blast. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 52-year-old married woman, but my husband and I have been at odds for a few years because he is a cheater. I never caught him, but all of his mannerisms changed and we stopped being intimate. The arguments got so bad that I stopped talking to him altogether and focused more on my kids and my promotion at work. I fill the void in my marriage with a side piece that happens to work at a car dealership, and he is as fine as frog here. He was flirting heavily with me when I bought a new SUV from him. He suggested that we break in the third row of my new truck. So we did. For weeks after that, I would drive to his job, and we got busy in the third row of my truck. I'm sure his co-workers knew we were having sex, so I was taking a big risk because one of them goes to my church. I didn't care. The sex was too good, and it was so much fun. But after a month of great sex, it all came to a screeching halt on the day of my eight-year-old daughter's birthday. I picked up four of her friends for the party at the skating rink. My daughter got on the third row of the SUV, and her friends piled in. My husband drove his car, and when we got to the skating rink, my daughter gave her dad a cuff link. My husband said it wasn't his cuff link, and he looked directly at me. I walked, on, I walked on into the skating rink and got the girl situated in the party room. My husband got all up in my face and, and asked what I had been doing in my SUV and where the cuff link came from. I ignored him. My daughter put me on blast, but I don't feel like I owe him an explanation, or do I? Should I come clean with him? Hmm. This letter, this letter got me, got me upset. It it really did. Because what you're not going to do, mom, is blame the baby for your cheating. Uh, You're just not going to do that. You you were messing around in your truck with a car salesman and you got busted, period. 
Uh, the child was absolutely justified in giving the cufflink to her dad. Of course, she thought it was was her dad's. I mean, this is an eight year old uh, daughter. Your eight year old daughter. She doesn't know anything about all of this. I, I I just think you're wrong, mom. You didn't check behind yourself. Your salesman didn't realize he left the cufflink, and you you just got caught. Both of you guys, you know, basically, uh, that's it. That's all. And it's on you. No one else but you. That's proof of your cheating. You said you never caught your husband. It was just the fact that his mannerisms changed and he cut you off. But still no evidence. You know, there was no earring lying around, no hair, no underwear, etc. But you, my dear, left evidence. It was still it's still double standard in this world concerning men and women, meaning you can't do what I do. And that's just the way men think. Uh, that's why he was all up in your face about the cuff link. And you still have no proof. He doesn't want you cheating on him, though. So, no, you don't owe him an explanation. And please know that if you tell him the truth, your marriage is more than likely over. Uh, uh, men, men don't usually stick around when their women, when when their wives and women cheat on them. I, I really don't see how this marriage is going to survive the cufflink. And again, you have no evidence, Steve. Well, well, well. <laughs> Shirley, did I just hear you say mm-hmm. to a woman what that she doesn't owe her husband an explanation? For cheating. No. I just want to double check that I hear that. Uh huh. You heard. Okay, I said cool. it. Thank in you. This Thank particular... That's all I need. Thank you. Thank you. A <laughs> little bit of validation. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. My <laughs> own so daughter welcome. put me on blast. 52 year old married woman, but your husband and he, her have been at odds for some years. Here is the opening line because he is a cheater. She said that in the first opening statement. They have been at odds because he is a cheater. Next statement right after that. I never caught him. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We have a loophole in the contract. <laughs> we have a get out of jail free card. Mm. We have grounds for dismissal. Wow. We have unsubstantiated statements. We have all of this that I would be using right mm-hmm. after you said I never caught him. Mm-hmm. Then here comes the proof she thinks she has, but all of his mannerisms changed, and we stopped being intimate. You didn't mention that any of your mannerisms might have changed. Mm-hmm. And you didn't mention that maybe you stopped initiating sex. You just dumped it all on him in this letter. The arguments got so bad that I stopped talking to him. Now y'all ain't even talking. All together and focus more on my kids and my promotion at work. Then you said I feel the void in my marriage with a side piece that happens to work at a car dealership and he is as fine as frog hair. All hell. You the cheater in the letter. Mm-hmm. And you know what we what proof we have? An admission of guilt. You said this. You ain't caught him, but you said this. So now this letter has turned. When we come back, the results of the letter turning from the chief love officer. All right. Hang on, Chief Love Officer. We'll have part two of your response, Steve, coming up at 23 minutes after. Subject of today's strawberry letter, my own daughter put me on blast. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, my daughter, my own daughter put me on blast. Mm. Yeah, that this ain't the problem. No. It's this 50 year old married woman that are with her husband because she says her husband is a cheater. Then she turns around and says, I never caught him. Then she turned around and said, but he, all his mannerisms changed. And we stopped being intimate. So now, ain't neither one of y'all initiating sex at the house? You or him? Mm-hmm. And the arguments got so bad that I stopped talking to him altogether. So now, she ain't even speaking to her man at the house, and he ain't speaking to her. 
Everybody cool with this? You know why everybody cool with this? Because everybody doing what they want to do. Mm-hmm. I can assure you that. Because ain't no man coming in the house, you ain't talking to him and sleeping with him, and then he ain't going somewhere talking and sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. One more time. Talking and sleeping. Ain't no man walking in no house with no woman that ain't talking to him or sleeping with him, and he ain't going somewhere else talking and sleeping. I'm with you All when you're right. right. Man. Oh, who you know, right. you know nothing do that? So I don't now know let's anyone. move on. But mm. then Sister Arguments got so bad and they just stopped talking. She focused mm-hmm. more on her kids and her promotion at work. Oh, no, you didn't. You said right after that, I feel the void in my marriage with a side piece right. that happens to work at a car dealership. And and he's as fine as frog hair. And he was flirting heavy with me when I bought a new SUV from him. Oh, so now the real cheater in this letter with proof is you. And the yeah. proof is you admitted. I don't know why you told us this. This stupidity to me. But mm-hmm. we need people like you to keep these letters alive. So thank you. <laughs> keep our segment going. <laughs> yeah, this segment would have been over if it wasn't for stupidity. So we need stupid people. <laughs> we he need suggested people. that we break in the third row of my new truck, so we did. Mm-hmm. For weeks after that, I would drive to his job, and we got busy in the third row of my truck. I'm sure his coworkers knew we were having sex. So I was taking a big risk because one of them go to my church. Oh. So all it took she didn't care. was for somebody to say, let's break in your third row. Mm-hmm. So we did. <laughs> I'll be damned. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> I've right. been taking people to dinner and <laughs> sending flowers and notes and Boxes mm. with gifts in it. Woof. Being romantic. I got, right. I got to get me a back row on the truck. Four play. <laughs> and one of them go to my church, and I didn't care. She didn't care. The sex was too good, and it was so much fun. Mm. But after a month of great sex, it all came to a screeching halt. On the day, my eight-year-old daughter's birthday party, I picked up four of her friends for the party at the skating rink. My daughter got in the third row of the SUV, and her friends piled in. My husband drove his car. When we got to the skating rink, my daughter gave her dad a cufflink. My husband said it wasn't his cufflink, and he looked directly at me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, now, why would he look directly at you? Come on. Well, y'all ain't talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't having sex. So Mm -hmm. what? Y'all ain't doing nothing. So we got to what? So now... He didn't find your baby didn't find the cufflink in the car, so mm-hmm. now, now he won't talk now. <laughs> oh, now you won't have conversation <laughs> at the damn skating rink. Right. <laughs> I walked into the skating rink and got the girl situated in the party room. Mm-hmm. My husband got all up in my face and asked me what I had been doing in my SUV and where the mm-hmm. cufflink came from. I ignored him. Mm-hmm. As you should. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My daughter put me on blast. Well, your daughter didn't really put you oh, on no blast. No. Your daughter mm-hmm. found a cufflink mm-hmm. and know that cufflinks is normally she's seen her daddy with a cufflink on. Right. And brought her dad, daddy, he go, your cufflink. Right. Because the baby don't know y'all having marital issues. She knows something uh-huh. ain't right because mm-hmm. y'all acting a little strange with each other. Wonder mm-hmm. how come my mom and daddy don't never talk like your mom and daddy. Yeah, but kids, we no. already know why, because y'all out there screwing other people. Mm-hmm. So y'all ain't got to talk. You've been <laughs> on that back row of that damn truck, just messing it all up. It's losing value. Your truck <laughs> is losing value. And even if you take that same book, same damn truck back to that car dealership with uh-huh. that same salesman you bought it for, he uh-huh. ain't even, he go, he he know that the third seat is damaged. The so now you got- ain't even going to get true blue book value for your damn car. Because <laughs> so he already loss? know. I'm telling you, this salesman know what's been happening back yeah. there in the back seat. Yeah. Should I come clean with him? What? It's over. Come clean? <laughs> Hell no. What's wrong with you? You stupid. Anyway. <laughs> for the first time, Shirley said, and I this is why I'm using this, Shirley who adamantly uh-huh. always promotes the truth. Uh-huh. Shirley, who always adam adamantly promotes 
being true to the other person. Honestly, uh-huh. Shirley, who uh-huh. always wants to know why men lie, the set up here and told this woman not to say nothing. That yeah. is a form of a lie, and I support that. You should 1, know. Percent. <laughs> Hell no, you don't owe him no explanation. Oh, what cufflink? You ain't never been on the third row, and you mm-hmm. don't know who been back there. Some serviceman been back there or something. And yeah. it is a serviceman because he was servicing you. We got to go. <laughs> Post your comments on the Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, a young college student needs your advice. His name is EJ. EJ wrote on Facebook, somehow the fact that my girlfriend and I have an intimate relationship became big, upsetting news. My parents invited us on a weekend vacation and apparently assumed that we would want separate rooms. When we laughed, they got all in their feelings and offended because they paid for a third room without ever asking us. Now it's all kinds of awkward, even though we're both adults and in college. I know they're old fashioned, but come now, come on. I'm not even sure we should go now. How much more awkward does this have the potential to be, uh, to get, assuming we even go through with it now? Well, listen to me, young man. First of all, it's called playing the game. Mm -hmm. Go on a vacation, let them take the extra room, set your girl stuff up in her room, you set your stuff up in your room. At night, y'all going to do what y'all going to do because y'all already doing it. You're not going to stop. And now the parents, with this being appalled, you can be appalled, but this is the reality of what happens now. They off in college. You invited them to go on vacation together with y'all. Right. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's, yeah. What y'all thought was going to happen? So listen to me, <laughs> young man. This is how you play the game. Play the game. Say, Mom, Dad, you're absolutely correct. We're just going to go and we'll have a great time. Y'all going to be tucked all up under each other. And then the night, your old ass mom and daddy going to go to bed. Go on over there. <laughs> Fall go on asleep. over there to the room, dog. Now, you ain't going to be able to get up earlier than them. So they going to uh-uh. find out your ass ain't in the room. Uh-huh. <laughs> so now, you, there's no way you can get up earlier than old people. Nope. So they going to find out. Computers. Just say, hey, mom, I was over there. We was watching movies and I fell asleep. My bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all you got to do. But go and do the respectable thing and just play the game. Yeah. Because a lot of old school parents feel that if you're not married, you shouldn't be sleeping in the same room. Listen, with them, you know, listen, when you're I've around had them. college when you're students around them. Mm-hmm. come around us. Dad, can my girlfriend come here? Dad, can my boyfriend come here? Yeah, because you've got grown kids, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've had them all the way through. They're welcome Uh to come. Now, they can't stay in your room out of respect for my house. Right. I got what y'all may be doing, but here's Mm -hmm. your room over here, and here's her room over here. Now, if y'all want to sleep with each other, then y'all need to go get a room. Just respect the house. Because I'm not going to be in my house and hear sound. (laughs) <laughs> that, ain't, that, ain't, that ain't what we finna do. All right, Steve. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, we'll talk about divorce. Uh-oh. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Actor and singer Tyrese is going through a messy divorce from his estranged wife, Samantha. Uh, Tyrese doesn't want to pay spousal support. He wants their prenup enforced, and he's requesting joint physical and legal custody of their daughter. Well, the other day, Tyrese went live on IG, and he was talking about when other people are in your business. Take a listen. It takes two to tango. Your mama, your daddy, your whoever could be all in your ear talking about your husband every day. And it takes you to listen to it. It takes you to believe it. And it also takes you to see this, see things through the lens that your mama wants you to see things through. You see what I'm saying? When you're an adult, you're going to listen to a lot of people. Why are you with him? Why he ain't never home? Girl, He, did, I would never let nobody treat me and talk to me like that. Everybody got something to say about your marriage and your relationship. But they would take your man in a minute. They would take your man in a hop, skibbity, jumpity minute. They talking about your life, but they actually want your life. Okay, Jody. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I, I don't even, I don't know I've, what to I've say. known Steve, Tyrese for a long time. All I uh-huh. have to say is everybody got something to say if you're going to provide them something to say. Mm-hmm. See, something if say. you would just quit giving people stuff to talk about, Mm-hmm. Less so. people would be in your business talking about it. Mm-hmm. I just don't think you can solve your marriage or fix your trouble online. And, and yeah, I well, think that's you what fix it say. with communication and counseling. Mm-hmm. What is this thing, Steve, about people putting their personal, intimate business? out for the world to see on social media. What is that? I don't, you know what I think it is with a lot of people? Uh-huh. Okay. A lot of what? people think, first of all, we care. Mm-hmm. That That's first. That as if somebody care. Like we oh, ain't got uh-huh. enough of our own. Yeah. And then <laughs> but the people average do care, person don't... that goes live, uh-huh. they really think they ass is deep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I, I know exactly what you mean. I, I think it's a yeah. lot of people talking uh-huh. because they think what they saying mm-hmm. ain't ever been said before. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say something so profound uh-huh. to show people the depth of what I'm thinking and to show them what I'm going through. Right. Mm. Right. And Carla, P- I don't think people care unless you put it out there for them to care. We wouldn't even know. Well, what I'm we saying know? is people care you know about I mean? celebrities. They're nosy that's about true. celebrity that's business. True. They do. Yeah. So that's why these websites and TMZ yeah. and that's all this very stuff true. exist because people are nosy about celebrities and then they want that's to. That's true throw darts or give their opinions about it but I think what Steve is saying is don't give them a pin to stick you with you don't have to reveal everything, everything. That's what I'm celebrities, saying. On that. Yeah. celebrities have the ability to mm-hmm. draw more clicks right, right. but if that's they your do. objective is mm-hmm. to get clicks then just then that's look, not man, real that's fake. I just don't I don't like I don't understand the pouring out of yourself to the public, airing right. out your dirty laundry right. in public. Celebrity or and, not. I, and I, then I, the I, other thing, right, celebrity right. or not. And this ain't about celebrity. Tyrese. This is about anybody. Yeah. Well, all we're hearing is your side. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. please know there is another side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And like right. my mother and father used to tell me all the side, it's three sides to every story. It's your mm-hmm. side, it's they side, and it's the truth. And the yep. truth, right. And yep. you right. need to hear both sides before you know the truth. People kill me just blurting out they way. Right. Because and if you hear that other person's story, uh-oh, uh-oh. Hey, yeah. bro, you might not be the little smelling like a rose you think you are. You might yeah. be a little bud of gall yep. for yeah. you know. All right. All right, uh, coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles finds itself in a tough spot just 24 hours after rapper PMB Rock's murder. It's a crisis many businesses are facing amid a violent crime wave. When and how to resume normal operations. According to TMZ, the Roscoe's where the rapper was killed was open for business on Tuesday. The restaurant was fully functioning and had been cleared, uh, cleaned after Monday's horrible incident. Prior to the shooting, uh, PMB's girlfriend posted a a picture of the couple's meal with their location, and that's when police say uh, that after that he was a target for a robbery and when he was shot and killed. This is really, really such a sad, sad story. You you can't even go out for a meal. It's a horrible state that we live in. It really is, Steve. I mean, you know, uh, posting this stuff, you know, everybody trying to blame this girl for posting. For That's posting, what people yeah. do. We just took a picture of some food. Mm-hmm. How would you mm-hmm. think so harmless that if I take a picture of a plate of chicken and some waffle, that somebody mm-hmm. gonna come in here and kill us? Who, I know. Who thinks I like know. that? So I wish everybody would stop blaming this young girl. She's going through enough. She was right there when yeah. the kid got killed. We live in, man. man mm-hmm. This sick. world right here is so yeah. sick. And man. we got and our young men, we are mm-hmm. losing our young men. 
to these yeah. types of actions of violence without any forethought to consequences in the future and all right. disregard for human life. That's right. Jesus. All right. Uh, coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Here we go, Steve. Would you rather go on a silent meditation retreat for a week or would you rather spend a weekend with someone who doesn't know when to stop talking? <laughs> we know what you're going to say. Either silent <laughs> meditation or partner. Yeah, I'm going to go out there. Give me a fishing up. rod. Just be out there fishing and chilling. But when? You don't know when to stop talking. Uh-huh. But just you're with talking. the... You're with someone. You're Hell, I know somebody yourself. like that right now to just run his day. And he a guy, too, and talk oh. all the time. He can't <laughs> shut up. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Have you ever said that I don't even like men him? like that. Yeah. Uh, I say, have dog. you ever said, shut up or be quiet? Yeah, dog, or... dog, dog. You can't you say mean, everything you think. Wait, hold up. You said that to someone? Because we say that to you on a regular uh, filter. Uh, <laughs> I'm no, in wait. shock right now. I give my thoughts of what I'm thinking, but um, I don't sit up and go, ooh, man, I'm breathing. Oh, it's every thought. Yeah. <laughs> it's Man, well, whose coffee cup was that? <laughs> all right. Ooh, Would man, you rather? I don't know what all I got to do today? Let nobody give a damn. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Would you rather have everything you eat be too salty or not salty enough? No, not salty enough. Yeah, me too. No, yeah, I, yeah. No, no, no matter that, how no, much. No, salt. that too salty is horrid. Yes, you can't enjoy it. it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. hate that. You're right. All right, Steve, would you rather have a mosquito bite on your butt, okay, or would you rather have a mosquito bite on the bottom of your foot? Well, it's hard to get to either one. But, uh... but on your booty, though? <laughs> on your booty? Mosquito <laughs> bite? <laughs> <You're just scratching. laughs> I'll take it on the bottom of my foot and just get up and walk it off. Ooh, really? That's a rough one. It's hard to scratch That's your a rough one. I've head. had that before. That's I ain't going to scratch it, though. I know how to play that stuff off. I'm from the country. I don't have stuff. I just like play what? it off. Like, how, how would you how play you it play off? How do you play it Yeah. No, it's a mosquito bite. You can't itch it right now. Keep, I'm at work. But oh, see, so I be busy all matter? the time, You're so it's easy for matter? me to ignore a lot of stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're so that mosquito bite ain't going to eat my life up. Like, I sunburned my arms playing golf in the Bahamas. Because uh-huh. I forgot that one day to put my suntan lotion on my arms. Sunscreen. And man, these bad boys is itching me. Oh, God. I'm really? going to look like a snake in a couple days. You peel and you're going to flake up. Dry. Oh, I'd be glad when it goes on and get started. So we can get it over with. But once That's it not- starts, I speed the process up. I take a hairbrush and I brush my arms. Yeah, you can put some aloe vera on it, too. I, I miss that part of it. I got oh. sunburned one time really bad, and I bought real aloe vera mm-hmm. and sliced it and put it mm-hmm. on there. Yeah. And that, that, that stopped it from ever peeling in anything. Yeah. Uh-huh. That real aloe vera is, is, is the truth. Mm-hmm. I waited too late for that. Um, okay. Aww. We've learned so much today. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> All right. Coming up at 49 minutes after the hour, it's our last break of the day. And we'll have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day. Um, We got to give our our condolences out to renowned uh, jazz pianist Ramsey Lewis out of Chicago. His music entertained fans for more than 60 years. Um, He passed away in his sleep at his Chicago home. Uh, Mr. Ramsey Lewis was 87 years old. He approached 87, 87 yes. years old, and he still Man, looked great. You know, yeah. the first time I just met him a mm-hmm. few years ago for the first time, I was mm-hmm. eating uh, at a restaurant in Chicago for lunch, me and Marjorie, uh-huh. and I saw him, mm-hmm. and I walked up to him, and I said, uh, Ramsey Lewis, he said, Steve Hart. <laughs> Which that messed Chicago me up. Pool. And yes. I said, Hey man, can I hug you, man? Aww. He said, Man, I want you to. Aww. And we hugged, and I just thanked him for his music, man. Yes, yes sir. Yes, his yes, sir. Music got me through flunking out of college. 
Mm. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to say got me through college because nothing could have got me through college. <laughs> no, no song. <laughs> nothing. Not, prayer didn't get me through college. <laughs> so I know good hell well that music wasn't. But man, I talked man. to him about Earth, Wind, and Fire. I talked yes. to him about mm. the yes. Sun That's Goddess cr- album. Yes. I yes. talked to him about Gratitude. musicians, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. And his the woman he was with was so grateful. Wow, thank you so much, Steve. He yeah. made his day. Yeah. No, nah, man, I know who he is. Oh, so, yeah. Man, condolences yeah. go out to the Ramsey Lewis family, man. What a great contribution to music this brother made, man. Yes, he did. Yes, what a he did. great con- This was a bad, bad boy, man. Mm-hmm. And to young people, you should download The Sun Goddess. Yes. You, sh- you, mm-hmm. should, you, got, mm-hmm. you got to see what this dude really did. Young people yes. out there who don't know who Ramsey Lewis is, download Sun Goddess and sit mm-hmm. down. Go oh, sit down somewhere. What a beautiful get, song. Get some of his albums and download it. It's yeah. timeless. Yeah. It is, Steve. The contemporary jazz sound yes. is yes. timeless. Mm-hmm. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. He said, He said, Steve, life is a solo. I just know that when I put my hands on the piano, it's going to flow. <laughs> And, and that it does. It, did. it, it does. It did. Yes. Yes, sir. Ooh, <laughs> that's From that day goddess. to this. Yes. Yes. yes that yes. is my album. Everything. One of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. He's worked with people like Man. Aretha Franklin, Tony Bennett, Al Jarreau, of course, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm-hmm. And uh, like you say, our deepest condolences to the Lewis family. Also, that's condol. Unbelievable. Yeah. 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 True Chicago legend. Well, legend. Yeah. yeah, Chicago native. Mm hmm. I mean, man, Uh, if if you knew stuff that he was responsible for. Mm hmm. uh, I mean, man, he would play stuff like Hang On Snoopy. Uh huh. Wade in the Water, The In Crowd. Uh huh. Snoopy, hang on. Uh huh. Tight, everything is all right. (laughs) Sun Goddess, Wade in the Water. Uh huh. Oh, Happy Uh Day. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, I mean, this sir. dude would do the, the versions of it that was so, so cold, man. Yeah. He yeah. was such a talent. My such mother loved Ramsey Lewis. Innovator. You know, growing mm-hmm. up in Chicago. Woo, woo. <laughs> Ramsey Lewis. Yep. He had a radio show, too. Uh huh. He was, yeah. he was greatness. Greatness. There we go. Uh huh. Yes. My yep. goddess. Yes, sir. Woo. Man, you don't know the times we had with that old. Oh, man. oh yeah, I remember. Oh, oh, <laughs> I love it. Man, love let it. me tell you something, man. We would pull our cars up at the park in mm-hmm. college, and everybody would tune in to the same station uh, and mm-hmm. open their car doors. Uh, yes, I mean you know <laughs> that, that's all we had back then. I'm pretty y'all. Yeah. Come on, aren't y'all had y'all boombox? What, what no damn boom box. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Why don't you have your Bluetooth speaker? Excuse me. <laughs> we made it work, though. We made it work. Yeah. <laughs> Open all your car doors. Everybody yep. get on the same radio station and cut it up. Cut That's it right. up. That's that right. was our That's Bluetooth right. system. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nice. Yep. Uh, his music lives on. We will miss Ramsey Lewis. Also, Steve, condolences going out to uh, the family of singer Jesse Powell. Uh, Jesse just turned 51 on mm-hmm. Monday. He passed away on Tuesday. His sisters, wow. Trina and Tamara, um, uh, made the announcement on social media. His song, For You, Jesse Powell's song, just For You, you was... You. Just yeah, you, 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 mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. What was the wedding song? It was the wedding song of the 90s. No one got married in the 90s. Yes. Anybody got <laughs> married in the late that. 90s, yes. 2000, that was their song. You. Wow. That Absolutely. was a beautiful song. He had a beautiful family. voice. Wow. That, was a, ooh, that was a singing family right there. Jesse Powell had an incredible voice. Yes, he will be missed as well. Wow. Mm hmm. I know. You know, I, know. I think, uh, you know, I mean, look. Death is a part of life, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. But it doesn't change the difficulty of it. Yeah. The grief, right. the pain. Uh-huh. And, and yeah. The, the timing of it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All of it. The, the part about death is we all know it's coming. It's inevitable. But the timing is never right. I ain't ever seen it hit at the right time. Hmm. Because no, right. even if you know somebody is ill, Mm-hmm. The news of their demise mm-hmm. is is crazy. We always ha- hold out the hope and the faith that they'll be all right, even if you know they're sick. 
So the timing of the death always comes with a measure of pain, and it's an indescribable pain. Mm-hmm. So all we can do is live the best life we can to prepare for the day that is our turn. Right. And man, that's that's not a pleasant thought, I don't think. So but we all gonna get there.